Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minute here and welcome back to the workbench. Today, another unboxing and we're taking a look at this, the Douglas A4 Skyhawk from Airfix. This is a 172nd scale kit and it comes with two rather interesting paint schemes. So without any further ado, join me as I take a look inside the box and see what we get. So on the front cover here we've got the indication down here that there are two different paint schemes and this rather exciting image of the Skyhawk being used in combat and dropping some of its ordnance there. Down here we've got an item code which is A03029A and that's pretty much it on the front. On the back we've got nothing so this is one of the slightly larger kits from Airfix and they don't put any printing on the back so most of it's going to be on the sides. So on this edge we've got some information about the actual Skyhawk as well as the two different paint schemes that are included. We've got one which is for a USS Intrepid aircraft in 1966-1967 and then we've got another one for the Argentinian Air Force in the South Atlantic in 1982. Over here we've got the paint colours which are recommended by Humbrol. Uh, obviously Hornby owns Humbrol and Airfix so it makes sense that they're going to merge those two together. We've got one flying hour so cut that out, keep it, you might be able to redeem it for more kits in the future and it says that it's a skill level one so it tells me that it should be quite an easy kit to build but that remains to be seen. The other side of the box we have some warnings, some other symbols for various things, contact address for Hornby, a cartograph logo so this tells me that the decals are going to be really good and then we've got a nice little sticker here which tells us it's a officially licensed product from Boeing. The short edges of the box feature the same image and information as on the front. So let's get into this box. First up I'm going to take a look at the instructions just like normal and these are to the normal format from Airfix. Front page has some general information about the Skyhawk Flipping over we've got some safety information and also the key to the different symbols you'll encounter. Then we get on to the actual step-by-step -step pictures and these are drawn to the normal standard that you can expect. These are quite well laid out, we've got the paint colour callouts for each different part. We've not got too much going on in each step so that's quite good, it makes it quite clear for you to see what you're doing. We start off by assembling various parts of the cockpit and we can add our pilot so there should be a pilot included. We come down here then we start working on elements of the engine and by stage 11 we should be ready to be putting the fuselage halves together and it says here that you need to put five grams of weight in the nose which will be very beneficial if you want to have the landing gear uh, lowered. Flipping over the page we add the wings and it says here that we need to open up these holes I presume these holes are for ordnance but this bigger hole in the middle is if you want to use one of their display stands which don't come in the set. Moving on a bit further and we get to the point where we start to do the landing gear but you need to make sure you pay attention to these because if you start doing this but you really want the landing gear raised skip these steps and pop on over to the other page and it literally just is a matter of gluing in the covers. The uh, front leading edge here that can be glued in an open or closed position which would include increase the amount of lift for the aircraft if it was landing. If you don't want to have it in the open position though you need to make sure you cut off the sort of mounts for it. We also have a nice optional uh, choice here of putting in our air brake. We can either have it open or closed and then flip over the page and we've got our final bits where we add sort of the weapons, the cockpit canopy and you can have the canopy open or closed and the weapons here it seems that the bombs are only for paint scheme B whereas the drop tanks are for both of them and it shows us where they go there. So what paint schemes do we get? Well these are printed in colour so I always like it when they print it in colour because it makes it so much easier to see what you should be painting where. So the first one is USS Intrepid and it's an overall grey with a white underside. I don't really like painting models in white. It's quite a difficult paint to use I find to get like a sort of really uniform colour. I certainly won't be using Humble 130 when I do come to do this one. I'll probably be looking at getting something else. But yeah, overall, 
grey and white. We've got the ailerons and the elevators picked out in different colours and the rudders, so the moving surfaces are all picked out in different colours. A skill level one though, this paint scheme might be a little bit too... Like if, if I picked this up as a beginner, like a fresh beginner, and went, oh, skill level one, it should be easy to do. This paint scheme, yeah, okay, it's only really two different colours, but having to then go and pick out these different parts separately in a different colour might be a little bit more difficult. I know I probably wouldn't be so keen on it, but I mean, it shouldn't be too difficult. But it does look like there's quite a few decals. Flip over the page. And here we've got the um, Argentinian one. Slightly different, but very similar. Same grey and white as before, but this time it's got transfers which go on these moving surfaces here to make it look just a little bit different. I'm undecided which one I'm going to do, so let me know down in the comments which one you think I should do in when I build this one. Cool, so that's the instructions. Up next is the decals, and yeah, we've got quite a big sheet. So at the top here we've got our common ones, which will be ones that can be used on either paint schemes. Uh, they look like control panels and then various other indicators. That's an anti-glare panel there by the looks of it. And then next step down we've got the American version and then the Argentinian version here. The decals are printed to the normal standard from Cartograph which means that they're going to be absolutely fantastic. We can't see any registry errors or misprints or tears. It's a very nice looking sheet of transfers. Everything is very well printed and even some of the small wording is legible which is nice to see. I suppose all that remains to be seen is how well they actually apply to the model. So what's next? So here is the bag of all the plastic bits and what treats are in store. Right well something's instantly fallen off there not sure what that is but I'm sure we'll figure it out. One, two, Three, three grey sprues, and one small clear one. So let's see if I can figure out where that's come from. It looks like a control uh, column. Is it a control column? Not sure. Not sure what that bit is. So what have we got here? We've got the various drop tanks the seat, landing gear parts, bulkhead, pylons with the bombs over here. Got some nice detail in there in the landing gear bays. Plastic doesn't feel, it feels it feels a little bit greasy. They, they have used some mold release on this so I, I can feel that. But the detail is molded in this sort of grey plastic and it in some places it feels really soft, in other places it feels really hard. It feels more flexible than the normal uh, plastic that Airfix uses, but it's not too bad. There doesn't seem to be much flash on this particular sprue. There is a little bit here and there which will need tidying up. Oh, is that what it is? That, I think that's where that, that piece has come from. It's come off of there, it's one of these sort of mounting points for the uh, sort of flappy bit on the wing. Yeah, so that's where that's come off of. Generally though, the detail on this sprue looks to be quite good. Let's take a look at this one. So we've got one of the fuselage halves and tail surfaces, a few other bits and pieces. That's another bomb there. Here's the pilot. How does the pilot look? He looks all right. Pilots are always a bit of a, a worry when you get them in a kick. Sometimes they either look really good or they look absolutely terrible. Yeah, but he's okay. I will probably will end up using him. And then we come on to the final sprue. Air brakes, engine components there. I'm not sure if that one's quite moulded correctly. Can you see that there? This part here, I don't know if it's supposed to be like that, but it doesn't look like it's quite moulded all the way through, so the detail's not as rich as it could be. The rest of them there though, they look okay. So what about the clear parts? Well we get one little sprue and these are for the cockpit canopies and that's it. There's no other clear parts in this and they are molded to a good quality. The plastic does appear to be crystal clear but there does seem to be 
sort of on on here in particular i can see that there's like a slight ripple to it i don't know if it'll pick it up on camera but there is a sort of a slight ripple to the plastic almost as if it's not quite been hot enough as it's gone into the into the mold and i mean it's not it's not it's only noticeable if you're looking up close but it's uh it's okay a tiny bit of flash on the back there but yeah generally not too bad to be honest though i would wouldn't have uh, expected worse given the age of the tooling so i'll put these things back in the box and then i'll tell you a little bit about the actual age of the kit so the tooling of this kit dates from 2012 and i think that's quite evident in the sort of standard that we've got it's up to that that modern sort of aesthetic that airfix have gone for it looks to be quite well detailed it's granted it's not necessarily as detailed as other companies that are out there but it, it looks it looks quite good i haven't heard many people have problems when building this one so i'm looking forward to it being quite a nice build to do skill level one i'm not sure uh, that it is a skill level one it does seem with the number of parts that it might be a little bit more difficult but if you've got a little bit of experience i'm sure it'll be absolutely fine this boxing I've got here dates from 2019, so it's a couple of years old now, and it has been released as a starter set in Top Gun colours and as a dogfight double with a MiG-17 in recent years as well. So this kit is out there if you really wanted one. So if you're going to go and get one, how much could you be looking at paying? Well, for this, the recommended retail price sort of at the moment is around £14 to £15. I was fortunate enough to get it for a tenner, so very lucky for me there. Is it worth that? Well, possibly, if you really wanted a Douglas Skyhawk in 170 second scale. And to be perfectly honest, I am sure that this is leagues ahead of the original version that the, the Airfix had tooled back in like the 1950s, I think it was. Yeah, 1958 was when the original tooling came out for this. And now this is the updated version from 2012. But what do you think of this kit? Do you think it's a good kit? Is it something that you'd be likely to get yourself? Let me know down in the comments. Whilst you're in the comments box, let me know any ideas for videos you might like to see in the future as well. As always, shout out to my patrons and channel members on Patreon and YouTube. A massive thanks to these guys and the extra support they give my channel. If you'd like to know more about what becoming a patron or a channel member means, take a look at the links in the description. And whilst you're in the description box, you'll find links to my social media. Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.